Good morning folks, welcome along to the vlog. We're in on Tuesday. Oh, just seen something stuck to the lens. And uh, we are brewing. We've got the bitter underway. Uh, after we had to do quite a few quick jobs first thing this morning. So when we arrived into work, it was absolutely chucking it down. And there were two considerable leaks in the roof. So I've been up there with some gutter in and because it's an asbestos roof, I've slid a piece of gutter in under the lower sheet and propped it up on the top one so anything that comes through just runs down that piece of gutter in and back out of the building. It's worked, so that's what you saw me doing up the ladder just then. Gemma's off work today. She's with us in the brewery today, not off work. She's at work with me, should I say. Um, so, unfortunately she's going to have to take it steady. We're a family of invalids. She's done a back in, bless her. But what she's doing for me at the moment is she's tidied the workshop, which I can always tell the difference. And now she's gone across to Screwfix to pick up some pipe lagging so we can lag the pipe work for the cold room because it's starting to drip on the floor a bit now. And then off the back of that, I decided to clean all three tanks because we're going to do back-to-back -back brews. And uh, I noticed that a couple of fittings, I needed some more fittings for the CIP. So I sat down and I quickly welded up four fittings. I apologise for not getting any footage, but I was absolutely ripping through all these jobs. And then I fitted a ventilation pipe to the boil kettle to prevent any uh, boil overs happening on the top of the kettle. I'll show you what I mean. But it's turned out that the pipe that I've put in there is now um, an input manifold, if you like, for like a vacuum pipe for the uh, condenser flue. So as the condenser flue is condensing the steam, it's created a vacuum on the other pipe which I'll be able to demonstrate by holding a piece of tissue up to the bottom of the pipe and it sucks it on. So that really gives testament to how effective the condenser flue actually is. Uh, we've got the hops weighed out, we're just about to come to the end of the mash. We've almost caustic all three tanks so I'm ready to start with the Persid. We've got lots of pumps running out there, it's quite noisy. So I'll just take you off the tripod and we'll quickly go and have a look at that vacuum pipe that I've done and I'll show you the result of the um, guttering, if you like, that I've put up on the roof. Right, let's go and have a quick look at the stuff that I've put together this morning. So the first thing we've done is uh, repair that leak up there. So you can see what I've done with the guttering. It kind of does work to get a better shot. So that's the top, that's the bottom and you can see it runs underneath that other section there to take it back out of the building. It looks the wrong way because I've got the funny camera angle on it. But trust me, it works. And then you can see here where we started at, to accumulate a puddle of water from a leak over here. And that, of course, was coming from directly above us. And again, you can see the drain pipes have fixed the problem completely. So that's good news from uh, that front. And then if we go across here, you'll be able to see the vacuum pipe that I've installed onto the boil kettle. So it's just quick release. And I know it's a vacuum because it's cold to the touch, whereas the condenser flue is red hot. Well, it's not red hot, but it's hot. So if we just take a little bit of tissue paper like this, and we come to the bottom, and we just hold him up there, he will eventually make me out to be a liar. There we go. So you can see that it's definitely created a vacuum and there's the condensation uh, coming out the bottom of the condenser flue and of course away to the drain. So that works. A treat. So I just got the pipe bender on there. 22 mil pipe, so we've got a nice big wide fit in. And then if we have a look in the boil kettle, you'll see that we're just about to come to the end of the runoff. We've been recirculating to mix it to get a good reading. And uh, I think that's about at capacity, give or take 15, 10 or 15 litres. Uh, Gemma's listening to a little bit of Toy Story music. And uh, I'm transferring. She's going to be going to pick the kids up in a minute, so I need to uh, 
obviously keep myself entertained because I won't have a vehicle. We've come down and shared the car this morning. The red one, by the way, is working. So, uh, just in case anyone's asking. Canopy, still up, which is a good thing. I'm hoping I'm not locked out. Oh, I'm locked out. Oh, go and get my key and let myself in. But I'm going up there because while I'm cleaning up the boil kettle after today's brew day, I'm going to partake in a pint. Ah, oh, Stu's here now, look, perfect. He can come and let me in. But yeah, I'm going to partake in a pint of beer at the same time. Right, let's try again. See if we can get in this time. Now Stu's here. Oh, for God's sakes. It's a good job I brought my keys this time to open the door. We are in. Right. Go catch him, wanky. <laughs> Is bringing Pekin Duck to the mask like everybody can enjoy? I don't know what the word. Wow. <laughs> I thought Stu was opening up. No! <laughs> Did I make you jump? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's me. Where's he gone then? Um, I don't know. Right. I'm setting up there. I'll come to get a pint while I'm cleaning up. Alright. So I'll just turn that down so we're not crashing the audio. And what's really good that I've not tried, I tried uh, the proof of concept yesterday. It's shit hard, isn't it? Yeah. To be fair, I probably have more of that than bacon than this. So. Yeah. What's this one? Storm, tornado. What's that one like? Uh, it's like a, an English mild. Ah, I'm all right. Cheshire lads, quite nice. Yeah, that's one from Sean Swindles owns that across in in Cheshire, of course, the Cheshire Brew House. Yeah. I met him a few times. He was on the board at Seymour when I was. Stuart went on a bit of a sort of renaissance Cheshire thing, didn't he, when he went back down? Yeah, there. yeah, to go and uh, meet his old champs. Or oh, shall I have something off at keg line? Number 11, very nice. There's a Willem JK IPA as well. Brute free. Is it free brute IPA number 11? Oh, I don't want a brute. I want something I can quaff a little bit. Vibe's quite nice, Nebula. Yeah, Nebula Pale. I think I might have a crack at that. Pick camera up for me mate and film it. Let's see if we can get a shot. We're all um Should be in the kitchen, yeah, just on uh, next to the sink. Right, you'll be able to watch me cock it up. These beers don't pour quite as nicely as my homebrew ones do at home. So uh, there's a knack to it in the body. Is yeah. this one lively? Sometimes. Sometimes. Right, let's see if we can do it. Oh, we're 80% there. I think that'll do. Let's let it settle. It is, it's a lively beer anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Look at the haze. Oh, it smells nice. Lovely jabbly. Right, cheers mate. Yeah. <laughs> cheers buddy, right. budding cameraman. Yeah, let's get the skate Don't be afraid of the cameraman. Right. I've got my pint. So now, don't know where Stuart's gone, he's probably gone back upstairs to finish them accounts. But I've got to shoot back next door with this beauty and uh, finish cleaning up after today's brew day. I should have a slurp now, shouldn't I, while it's quiet enough for you to hear my opinion. It gets a yes from me. Right, let's go back into the brewery. So while I was next door, um, I had to wait for the HLT to fill up so I could unplug it and it, so it wouldn't overflow. Get your words out, lad. Um, so what I've done, I normally collect any extra water that's after refilling the HLT for cleaning. But I knew I wasn't going to be here. 
So I kind of rigged up this little champagne pyramid to fill up a few other buckets while I'm not here. Kind of worked. I've got like two buckets out of it. So we'll fill the third one. And then we'll have four buckets of water for cleaning and swilling down when we're finished. So we're transferring across here into tank one. We started a little bit warm, but the cooling system's bringing it down for us. So now we're at 25.5, that was up at 28, but I've just uh, throttled it back. That's the caustic from cleaning all three tanks. I'm saving that. I'm going to give the preliminary rinse out the boil kettle with that. And then let's have a look inside. It actually looks almost the same colour as the bitter. So let's have a little peek in here. And um, we can see we're just about to hit the elements down the bottom. You can just see that little bit there. That's the takeoff port. So we're pretty much finished now. So we'll just wait for the sound of this pump to change. You can tell it's finished because it'll go as it sucks in air. And then we'll close that valve off. We go and fetch the other end of the pipe from over there. We bring that down here and we pop that up on here and we back flush water all the way through the system to get rid of any beer and any trub. And then we'll start to recirculate some hot water and then we'll throw that caustic in, recirculate that caustic, and then more hot water. And then once it's totally run clean, listen. That's how you know, you know it's finished. But yeah, once that's done, it'll totally run clean. And then once it runs clean, we can put the acid in for tomorrow's brew and we'll recirculate the acid through the plate chiller and then cap it off and leave it with acid in until we brew tomorrow. Then we know that everything that the wort isn't gonna run through is sanitary until we come to using it again. Quick on the hoof explanation, but that should, uh, that should be enough folks to uh, help you out. Uh, and give you an understanding of what we're doing in the brewery right now, so just partaking in a little little slurpy poo just to wet the whistle, you know and uh, I'm going to go ahead and get all this brewery cleaned down now I might even treat you I might even treat you to a time lapse of me doing the whole clean down process with some music that no doubt people are going to complain profusely about Cue the terrible music. So the CIP went really well. In fact, I left the caustic running in the tank for a good 45 minutes, nipped up to the brew shed, had a quick pint, come down, drenched myself. Yes, opened the lid, was changing some rinse water for the caustic and like a plonker. Uh, as I was dosing the caustic, I opened the lid and got covered in it. So there's a chance that, uh, I'm alright, I've washed it off myself, but there's a chance that this navy blue, or blue, dark blue shirt may become mottled with white patches. It's a chance. Anyway, never mind. Uh, we're just about to set off home. Because I've not brewed for a couple of weeks, 
I forgot that uh, I forgot the process that I'd used previously, which was to fill the tank up with a cleaning solution like I have now and set it to come on with the HLT in the morning and then before I arrive it's had like two hours of cleaning cycle whilst the HLT heats up the CIP is in action and then when I arrive the tank is spotless I just have to rinse an acid for the brew day so that's what I'm going to do uh, put in the spent caustic into the boil kettle for the first initial clean uh, was not a good idea so this caustic was spent because it had been through three fermenters and something that I neglected to recall was that uh, two of these fermenters were recently emptied and whilst they'd been rinsed they still contain a considerable amount of CO2 and CO2 actually uh, it dilutes the effect of caustic of sodium hydroxide it's an enemy of sodium hydroxide so essentially you build up I think sodium carbonate I believe is the byproduct uh, which makes the solution inert and takes away its cleaning properties so uh, I had to empty the spent caustic from the boil kettle and redose it which is why I got drenched but uh, never mind uh, we're just going to fall back to the original system that we had running a couple of weeks back and fill up the tanks ready to come on in the morning with the HLT. Just on a side note, I've had one of the duplex lights go out on this STC. Is anybody familiar with that? Look at the uh, decimal place. So that should read 11.0, but it reads 11. Point C. Anyone know how to fix that? I think I hear Gemma pulling up outside in the car. It's about time we put an end to today's vlog. So join us tomorrow if you want to see a little bit of the pale Harrison's Pale Brew Day. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the beer if I can and uh, maybe a few other bits and bobs. So. Make sure you hit the subscribe and the bell icon to be informed of that video, which you know is coming out tomorrow anyway. We'll see you then. Cheers. Yeah,